And just like that, Iowa Hawkeye linebacker Justin Jacobs has officially arrived. Coming into this past Saturday's matchup in Ames, Iowa, against the nationally ranked number nine Iowa State Cyclones, Jacobs' role on Iowa's defense was a little bit of an unknown, and even coming out of the game, you know, if we're being honest, no one outside of defensive coordinator Phil Parker and the Iowa coaching staff truly knows what his role will be moving forward. But one thing's for sure, this guy is way too damn good to not be playing nearly every single snap on this defense. Dating back to last season week one, as Iowa faced a lot of different injuries at linebacker, Jacobs made his first on-field appearance in a Hawkeye uniform, and right away, you could just tell that he moved different than everyone else. And then you saw his length and his stature, and he just looked different than everyone else. And although his production was limited in that game, that game alone sparked a lot of anticipation around what he could eventually become. And fast forward one season later, we just got a big taste into what kind of player he is. And let me tell you, this guy is special. So where to begin? Well, let's start with Jacobs' ability and coverage because presumably in Iowa's base 4-2-5, given the way they play it, Jacobs is going to profile sort of as that cash position player, uh, which is basically a hybrid nickel corner who can slide in the box from time to time or crash the edge and sometimes even line up inside the box in order to fit the run. But more often than not, Jacobs will be dropping back into some sort of coverage against either a tight end or an inside receiver. And what we've seen from Jacobs so far in this role is really encouraging. And it all starts with his ability to be physical and imposing at the line of scrimmage. And that is a little bit of a rarity for a guy being listed at 6'4", 240 pounds. I mean, you watch some of these coverage reps and he's lining heads up with athletic tight ends and jamming them off the line and making it look easy. You know, that alone is impressive because not only do you need good technique if you're going to do that, but in the event that you whiff or don't land a good jab, you need to have the speed, fluidity, quickness, and play recognition in order to recover and stay on that receiver's back hip so that you can sort of feel out their breaks in that route. This is one of Jacobs' strongest areas, and again, six foot four, 240 pounds, and not only is he a non-liability in coverage, he excels at it. This play right here is an amazing example because as we've already talked about, Jacobs does a really good job at asserting contact off the line of scrimmage and throughout the duration of a route. And as this play develops, he does a near perfect job of staying on that tight end's hip from beginning to end. And then we get to the conclusion of this play. And I mean, guys, this is a perfect throw, perfect throw. And not to get too far off point, but last year, Nick Saban, and we all know Nick Saban, and Saban's a coach who has built one of the most accomplished careers in the game of football, and he's a guy whose foundation for that career was created on being a defensive savant, you know, catering towards pass coverage. Well, last year, Saban went on the record with somewhat of a surprising quote to some people, saying, and this is very simply put, good defense doesn't beat good offense anymore. You know, it's a simple quote, but as is with most Saban quotes like this, the coaching community ran with it. And this freeze frame right here is exactly why he said it. Nowadays, more than ever before, linebackers in coverage, safeties, and even cornerbacks are having to compete with these uber athletic tight ends, wide receivers, and sometimes even running backs that are just built a little bit different. And they're doing all of that while also trying to keep their responsibilities in the run game and also while they try to diagnose the play as a whole as it's happening. You know, the defensive side of the ball is the most difficult side in football because it's almost entirely reactionary based and the guys in coverage have one of the most difficult tasks across all of sports play by play. And this throw and this freeze frame illustrates exactly why. You know, throughout this play, and we'll rewind it back here, Jacobs shows perfect technique makes good initial contact in the early stages of the route. He attaches himself to the tight end's back hip all the way through the route. And despite all of that, the placement on this pass is so good that this sort of ball in this situation gets completed 90% of the time. That said, 
Justin Jacobs isn't just going to be a next level player someday. He's going to be a special player because he can take an almost impossible situation like this and neutralize it through good technique by playing the receiver's hands all the way to the ground, having that playmaking ability, the athleticism, and the main staple of his game, physicality. And there were times in this game where you saw the flip side of a player in coverage for Iowa lacking that sturdiness and physicality going up against this same tight end. And don't get me wrong, number four for Iowa, Dame Belton, is a good player and a very good athlete. But tight ends at the top of their route love to throw their weight around and boldly cover guys with their strength in order to create separation. But with a guy like Jacobs, this isn't going to happen. And it even goes a step further in the sense that Jacobs is an explosive athlete who is strong at the point of attack and plays the game with heavy hands and binds all of that together to create a unique weapon in coverage. And it should be noted that Jacobs' impact in pass coverage doesn't just come against tight ends. In fact, his athleticism and fluidity translates over to covering some of the quicker slot guys you'll find, like Iowa State's Tariq Milton, for example. And on this particular play, one of the few times all game, we see Jacobs lined up off the line of scrimmage in a coverage rep. But once again, it's a similar story in the sense that he's going to initiate that contact, feel out the route, stay in good position against a much smaller player who is quicker than most tight ends, and he's going to end up eliminating a potential play with good coverage. And as we rewind it back, you can clearly see the progressions on this play for Iowa State just based on the hitches in the quarterback's footwork here, as well as his head movement and knowing Iowa State's offense, almost undoubtedly Tariq Milton is the first progression for this quarterback here because the other two routes on that side of the field just seem to be sort of clear routes for that quick out to the sticks. And again, great coverage rep from Jacobs to attach himself to the receiver's hip with light contact. And he's able to get his eyes around to that QB. And because of that, he denies the pass attempt. Obviously, you know, the play doesn't end up as Iowa would have hoped, but that comes as no fault to Jacobs because he did his part and he forced the QB off his first progression perfectly. And on this play, he gave his D-line a chance to get some pressure. And all of that being said, and as good as Jacobs was in his coverage assignments during this game, his defining moment and a moment that quite possibly changed the outcome of this game for the Hawkeyes came on this first down with 5.16 left on the clock in the third quarter. The play starts with Jacobs in an alignment that we're getting pretty used to seeing with him as he's lined up near the line of scrimmage, aligned heads up with a tight end, and Iowa State comes out lined up in what we can affectionately call tank personnel as they come out with two running backs and two tight ends in the formation. And usually that's going to be a massive indicator of a run being called, and that's exactly what we get. And once the ball gets snapped, and we'll play at half speed here, we immediately see Jacobs do a good job of getting his hands right where they need to be, right inside that chest of the inline tight end. And once his hands are there, this is one of the plays where you can really tell that Jacobs just plays with some really heavy hands and strong hands because he's able to get those arms extended very fast, which you know eventually gives him an edge in terms of leverage in separation and this interaction was really one on that initial point of contact by Jacobs because he's not only getting his hands in a perfect spot for leverage but we also know how long he is at this point and you know just looking at him you know that he's going to get more separation if he gets his arms fully extended than most other players typically would and as we press forward on this play Jacobs is able to easily shed Iowa State's tight end here and free himself to make a play and boy oh boy does he ever make a play because you know once he makes contact with Brees Hall behind the line of scrimmage he's able to land a solid punch in the meantime on the ball which ends up jarring it loose only to be picked up by fellow linebacker Jack Campbell who ends up scoring a touchdown and like we talked about earlier this came in a key moment of the game where it looked like Iowa State might be able to get back in it and one great play from Jacobs almost entirely nullified that idea. Moving forward, Jacobs' role remains a little bit cloudy because his ideal role, in my opinion, is the role currently being occupied by linebacker Jack Campbell, who is also a great player. 
And with Seth Benson, Iowa's other linebacker, from what we've seen, he appears to be the best run fitter on the team by a wide margin. And he scrapes the line of scrimmage super effectively. That said, the potential star power of adding somebody like Jacobs into the fold just can't be overlooked. And it would be a defensive malpractice, I guess, to limit him under 50% of the defense's total plays. But luckily for the Iowa Hawkeyes, standing on the sidelines is one of the most brilliant defensive minds in all of college football and Phil Parker. And I have no doubt if I'm seeing these things, he is too. And I wouldn't be betting on him to mess up this situation as the season moves forward. I want to thank you all for checking out today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And I know that I keep promising to do it, but I mean it this time. Expect more videos from me and this channel. I will not let you down. And keep showing that love on the like button. And in the comments especially. And if you aren't already subscribed, please do so. It helps me out a ton with YouTube's algorithm. That said, I will see you all in a future video. Take it easy.